Remember this a while like a few weeks ago? Saw this little parachute man online and decided it'd be nice to have an aircraft to, and try dropping a parachute from it. So first it was to design a plane and I decided on the C-130, the old Hercules. So I made one in foam board, worked out a way to release a parachute man from it and it worked really well as you can see here. Only thing is I really wanted it to be able to take off from the ground and that's where it was a bit of a fail. So I decided to add a rudder. Unfortunately that wasn't a great success because the model had a four-wheel undercarriage so it was almost like a little cart and basically it just wanted to go straight and of course the Hercules does have an undercarriage of four sets of wheels. So the next solution was going to be to add a tail wheel. Now I think the tail wheel on on many tail draggers is engineered just by extending the shaft of the rudder down to the tail wheel like on this old what four of mine but that kind of solution is not feasible on a C-130 because the rudder is so far remote from the position of the tail wheel so obviously I needed a solution didn't really want to add another servo the rudder servos way forward here because I wanted to keep the weight forward so needed to come up with a solution the idea I came up with was to make a linkage so that the other end of the servo here could actually connect across and I'd be using one servo to move the rudder and the tail wheel. So this is how I did it and I thought it was quite a nifty little solution. Maybe it's a common solution, I don't know, but it's certainly not one that I've seen. So let's take a look at my engineering. But as you can see, it's not the easiest thing to video, but as you can see you've got servo there and the tail wheel is going to go here. So, so this is what I've come up with. I've got to glue it back in which makes it very convenient for me to be able to show you the design of it. That's going to glue back in here like so. So as you can see it's going to be a tail dragger like that. I can't actually rest it on it because as I say it's not glued in yet. So that goes there like that. Not easy to actually show you this without getting my hands in the way. The servo is way down there. I've made a linkage here that hooks into the other end of the servo here. That goes across into this like so. So once that's glued in the right place there I can make fine adjustments when I'm gluing it. As the top part of the servo operates the rudder the other end of it here will be moving that lever and turning the tail wheel. Now I've actually got a little one of those little locking screw things that will go on that to hold that in place. This thing, as you can see, I've got a little locking screw there, liquid metal on a servo arm. So that clamps onto the tail wheel shaft. In fact, it's, it was even more complicated than that because that tended to move on it so I've actually hammered the end of this piece of thin wire to make it flat so that when I tighten that screw there's no chance of it moving. That was part of the problem I had with the first design. So that goes through that. The shaft actually was a tiny little metal tube out of a biro because it was all too sloppy before so that part now actually is quite good. Could probably do with a better wheel. That's my own construction which is a couple of bits of wood I think with a rubber band around it or foam board or something. So was quite pleased with a bit of, bit of design. I'll glue it all in and show you it operating, hopefully. Maybe that'll explain it better. It's, I thought it was quite a neat solution to having a tail wheel on a model where the rudder and the tail wheel are quite a long way apart and still only using one servo. So I'll glue it back together, see if I can show you it working. That's the little thing that's going to lock this onto the servo arm underneath which is just one of those things you put on an undercarriage to keep a wheel on. So that locks on there nicely, holds it in place. Much easier to do this now before gluing it in. And I can, as I say, I can make that final adjustment for position in that final gluing stage, having centered the rudder servo. So that's it. That's basically the way it's going to go once it's hooked onto the servo. And obviously I made some adjustments with my V-bend in the connecting arm there. So a final check before gluing that in position in the right place. Rudder moving that way. 
wheel moving that way. So my hookup's right. That's the question of gluing that in the right position so it's fore and off. And I've realised now actually I'd have been better with that shaft angled slightly that way. So I might just modify that before actually gluing it in. Right, well fortunately I discovered my design flaw in that that lever should be that way slightly because it crosses to a, the servo that way. So I've managed fortunately to bend the wheel axle so that the operating arm is over that way now when the wheel is straight. Yeah, that's going to make the linkage work. Well. It, in fact, the problem was it was working more in one direction than the other because if you don't apply the force in the right directions, it doesn't work. So I'm quite pleased about that I managed to spot that before gluing it. Test before you glue, that's the motto. But of course I've now got to correspondingly shorten my link here, which is why I have these V-bends in it. I can shorten that by that much so that the wheel is properly fore and aft when the rudder's fore and aft. Right, well it's taken a fair bit of messing around. If I'd thought of it when I was actually making this part, I should have made that lever offset at the in the first place. But with a bit of bending and tweaking, I've actually got the lever sitting this way so that it pretty much is the right angle of thrust back and forth for this rudder servo. And as I say, when I finally glue this in, I can set it up in exactly the right position for the rudder, which is in the central position at the moment, and the wheel to be in the central position. If I was doing it again, I'd know where to start, but it was all experimental. But all in all, pretty pleased with it as an, en as an engineering idea. I'm going to glue it in now. We'll put it on the ground and see whether it'll taxi. Right, so there it is then. And Parachute Man's back in his little bomb bay there. That's the release mechanism, but that's on another video. So there it is. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and get in a position where it's looking down. Nope. So there it is, working nicely, working in unison with the rudder, and it'll steer nicely, which is what the whole project was about. Anyway, so there it is, my C-130 parachute drop plane. There is a build blog for it and video of the successful test of it. So if you're interested, please check out the links for that. Actually, I was very pleased with this. It's the first plane I've ever designed from nothing, just from finding a very vague outline on Wikipedia, um, and then designed it. Pretty simple, of course, just a box fuselage. That's a foam wing from my foam cutter. There's a video about how I made my foam cutter too. So a bit of a botch up job, but it flew really nicely, which is amazing for something that I just knocked up one evening back of the fag packet job. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my algorithms. And why not check out some of the other stuff on my channel? There are a few kind of foam board constructions, including my very simple F16, which has just got two parts that you have to cut out. Very cheap and easy to build. Full build blog on my channel. And I must say the Maiden went exceedingly well. As you'll see, I'll link it at the end. There are also quite a few of the old cheap little foamy constructions, including number 14 or number 13, my aerobatic version, which I call the Red Devil, that also flew very well. But as I say, loads of the littles from biplanes to EDFs, etc. Anyway, I'll stop rambling on, but before I go, finally some good news. A couple of people contacted me because Parachute Man was actually captured behind enemy lines and they wondered what his fate was. Well, I'm pleased to tell you that he actually managed to escape from the concentration camp he was in, got a lift back to the airfield and the plane in a hippie camper bus and he's in training for his next mission as I speak. I'm not allowed to tell you too much at the moment, but watch this space. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll catch you all again soon. Bye for now.